we need Julian Assange. And one thing I want to say to you today is, it is not only that he is the victim of torture, it is not only that his life is at stake, it is not only the will to save him from a dreadful injustice, we also want to save him because the world needs Julian Assange as a symbol and fighter for liberty. Uh, Craig Murray from way back uh, and the reason why we played that because uh, we're going to talk about UC Global and then of course it, it was who else but Anton Karras uh, from The Third Man and I always like to bring him up because he deserves it being an artist all of my life I definitely like to give props to uh, other artists particularly artists better than me um, I am Randy Gretico. This is Randy Gretico, Assange Countdown to Freedom. Uh, we have um, a very special show, which is a continuation of our uh, May uh, show interview with uh, Max Blumenthal on his explosive uh, expose on uh, CIA spying on journalists and lawyers and others and including me, uh, through this uh, rogue uh, outfit in Spain called UC Global. Uh, and so we're doing a follow-up on that uh, today. Uh, we have some new information and we're going to recapitulate uh, the origins of the story. And uh, we'll do that uh, coming up right away because we have a lot of shows coming up. Uh, here as the Assange uh, show trial continues at the so-called Old Bailey in London. So we'll be right back uh, with uh, Max Blumenthal to talk about uh, new revelations. There's a man who leads a life of danger To everyone he meets, he stays a stranger chance he takes odds are he won't live to see tomorrow secret agent man secret agent man they've given you a number and taken away your name beware of pretty faces that you find their face can hide an evil mind Ah, oh, be careful what you say Or you will give yourself away Odds are you won't live to see tomorrow Secret Asian man Secret Asian man They've given you a number And taken away go live on the fly of Assange Countdown to Freedom. We are uh, continuing our conversation with uh, the uh, great investigative uh, journalist Max Blumenthal, the author, award-winning uh, journalist, author, uh, filmmaker uh, from Grey Zone News and other different uh, platforms. Uh, Max, it's really uh, interesting that you've uh, been able to um, elicit or, or find, uh, discover all of this information uh, regarding uh, UC Global's uh, illegal uh, intrusion into uh, Julian Assange's life at the Ecuadorian embassy. How were you able to obtain this info? Well, David Morales, the former CEO of UC Global, is now 
the disgraced CEO, was arrested in Spain in September 2019 on charges of embezzlement, violation of attorney-client privilege, fraud, and various other charges. And a court case began the following month in which he was forced to turn over piles of internal documents and his own text messages and several of his former employees testified against him as protected witnesses and i was able to obtain a lot of this information and synthesize it and develop it into a story uh, showing what actually took place over the years and how the Trump administration and Mike Pompeo's CIA brought this into being and targeted not just Julian Assange, but everyone who came into contact with him and violated the constitutional rights of Americans, including yourself. Your constitutional rights were violated by the CIA, which is legally forbidden from spying on American citizens. So I was able to show that through this Spanish case. And the Spanish case is so important because you're you have anyone who watches this and who follows you, they're paying attention to what's happening in London where Assange is facing extradition. He's, he's you know, basically, there, there are, there's a new round of hearings going on right now. Are you following those hearings, Max? Well, I'm not able to follow him as closely as the few reporters who are covering it, uh, who actually got credentialed and, allow, and are allowed to cover it. and you know they're covering it by zoom like i i think they're covering it they're covering it remotely so in, in any case the the case that's taking place under the watch of a spanish high court judge in madrid is what i'm focused on and i think it's so important because it has implications for the legal proceedings in london which will determine if Julian Assange is handed from one kangaroo show trial court to another in the uh, Eastern District in Virginia, which is basically one of the worst places to be put on trial in the U.S. if you're accused of violating U.S. national security. Why is it so important to focus on the Spanish case? Because it shows illegal spying and it shows the US government intruding into the private discussions of Julian Assange and his lawyers to discuss legal strategy, which means they were unable to even formulate a legal strategy without the prosecution listening. And if you consider what happened to Daniel Ellsberg when he revealed the Pentagon Papers and was put on trial, his prosecution was foiled because it was revealed that Richard, the Nixon administration attempted to break into his psychiatrist's office, steal materials, and paint him in the media as a mentally ill person or a madman. What took place with Julian Assange, the, the, the level of intrusion of malicious invasion of privacy and the violation of constitutional rights is so much more extreme than that, that it should completely invalidate his extradition and that's why it's so important. And that's why I'm 100% focused on it right now. Well, I got to tell you something, Max. I mean, I knew about this. I, I was told about this way back uh, in, in, in January. But I knew about it, UC Global uh, and Stefani Morito last year. But your revelations uh, back in May that you, uh, uh, you, know, you put out at the Gray Zone and also shared here, at the uh, Assange Countdown to Freedom were really uh, 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 amazing and shocking and chilling and ominous uh, uh, revelations that uh, had uh, heretofore had not been known. Uh, so uh, where do we, uh, where do we uh, go from that point that you shared that to where we are right now in terms legally at, at this trial in London? Well, the, the, this should be introduced in the trial. I don't know what the defense team plans to do. They've done a really good job so far based on what I've seen. 
of knocking down every argument against Assange, for example, that he, you know, exposed informants, U.S. government informants to harm and so on. Um, they've done a really good job of bringing witnesses who have credentials, who have real authority on these issues uh, to speak. Who, who, you know, Daniel Ellsberg himself testified. And what Ellsberg said was that they all, I was always seen as this, uh, you know, dissident figure who was portrayed in an often negative light until Assange and Snowden appeared. And then I was portrayed positively in order to contrast what I did with them in order to create a wedge between us. But I see no difference between myself and them. They too are acting in the public good. I thought that Ellsberg's testimony was particularly powerful, at least what I read about it. Um, but what, I'm, what I focused on in my most recent piece, and I did include some like fairly, some fairly new disclosures, although some of this had already been reported. Obviously it hasn't been reported by the corporate media, and that's what this story is about, is about the media's reaction to the Spanish case. Well, wait a second, Max. I, I I know that they did not react, but you know I would really crystallize here what you revealed. Uh, well, I already did. I mean, really. I mean, how how profound was it? A a, a violation of international and, and, and constitutional law. Uh, the uh, the surveillance. I mean, just just a, a recap that. In, in, in just in a minute, and then go on. I mean, honestly, when I got these documents and was able to start working on this, a lot of it was in Spanish. And, you know, I can communicate in Spanish, I can get on in Spanish, all right. So, but when I would translate it or have it translated for me by a native Spanish speaker, I couldn't believe it. And I would have to go back and say, is this, you know, really what was said? Is this, is this, is this real? Um, it was sort of unbelievable. I mean, this is the stuff of like a blockbuster Hollywood film if Hollywood still made films that actually were anti-authority and they obviously don't anymore. They, as, um, you know, Tom Secker has shown and other researchers, they have like the CIA and the Pentagon vet their screenplays. But this is just, it was shocking. One of the, some of the most shocking stuff was how UC Global, well, David Morales himself proposed poisoning Julian Assange. And his employees said, uh, you know, this is like way too far for us. What the hell are you getting us into? He proposed kidnapping him, uh, leaving a door open. Um, they went after his partner, Stella Morris, and were hounding her, and they started stealing the diapers of her infant son because they believed them the son was Julian Assange's son. They were correct. And they wanted to basically extract DNA from the diapers. They didn't realize you have to do it with saliva and not feces. But they're, So they were stealing the diapers of Julian Assange's son. I mean, this... This level of what you would call black operations is, it's, it's demonstrated, it's proven, and it was being done so on behalf of the CIA. And you have the whole Western media and all the human rights groups freaking out about Alexei Navalny, this marginal Russian opposition figure, supposedly being poisoned by Novichok, even though he's now awake and is you know, in Germany, like just chilling. Uh, yeah. I mean, it seems so, so suspect to me, this whole narrative, but this was, it's proven that a CIA contractor wanted to do this to one of the world's most famous dissidents, a journalist, Julian Assange. And, you know, I, I can go on and on. I mean, I, I've, I've found that Morales and his, his team had proposed, or Morales had proposed um, stealing documents from Baltazar Garcon or targeting the, the lead lawyer on Julian Assange's legal team, Baltazar Garcon, who's a, he's a famous Spanish. Oh, I know him as a great man. Yeah. A great I mean, he, 
he went after a lot of the he he he's, he he did a lot of crusading work for the victims of Franco's dictatorship. He helped and them. also uh, the dictatorship of uh, Pinochet. Of Pinochet, he helped pioneer the concept of universal jurisprudence in order to go after Pinochet himself. Right. And two weeks after Morales proposed targeting Garcon, Garcon's offices were. Rob, this was reported in Spanish media. I couldn't believe it. I, 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 I looked up, you know, what, whether his offices were robbed and found reports in El País, the Spanish daily, that masked men or men with hoods on broke into his offices, rifled through uh, files and did not steal anything two weeks after this file was dated. So it's that kind of stuff where you realize you're uncovering this gigantic intrigue, and it all traces back to Mike Pompeo CIA. And then you look at how the US media is treating it. Well, wait a second, Max. I just want to say your coverage of this, and you, you broke it here in, in, in May of uh, 2020. You did a huge two or three part story on it, uh, and you broke it here. Uh, and uh, it, it's really amazing what you did and, and what the gray zone did then. So let's go then to now. You must have gotten a million different media outlets that said, let's get this story, man. What an incredible fucking story this is that Max Blumenthal exposed about CIA abuse, particularly by Pompeo and the Trump administration, they must have been all over your ass, right? Right. I mean, yeah. I, I was on Anderson Cooper. Um, Chris Hayes had me <laughs> on. Ari Melber. We 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 like we listened to hip hop and like freestyled about UC Global. Uh, what else happened? Uh, oh, Maddow. I couldn't, it was hard to tell the difference between her and Chris Hayes because I was having so many interviews and they both are so similar. And this is uh, a major fucking story, Max. Yeah. You yeah. Did not I mean, the New York Times interviewed me about it. They, I mean, they, they, they went straight to Sheldon Adelson's Las Vegas Sands and were grilling them. Um, no, no, congressional wait, hearings, like, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You mean to team. tell me nobody went to you and said, can you please do our show? You did. And that was about it. Uh, you know, World Socialist, the World Socialist website reported on my findings. Uh, let's see. Who else? Um I'm sure you did uh, Brian Decker's show. Becker's yeah, show. yeah, loud and clear. Like, you know, it's alter alternative media entertained this. But why, but, why, why but, would they not want you? And who cares? And Forget about me. That's your latest story, man. That's Forget your latest me. story, right? It's not about you, but the, the, the new revelations. Which this is, is, this is the really deal. We originally I, wanted to talk to you about tonight, which is your new revelation about those who were not interested. I learned, and I've just reported this, that um, people around WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks sources, before they uh, were, before this story was well known, they were racing around the world after obtaining all these documents through the Spanish court case, trying to get interest from major media organizations. And they were completely stonewalled. And a few correspondents I learned actually tried to justify what the US government did to Assange on national security grounds, which isn't really shocking if you consider that the Washington Post editorial board wrote in support of Assange's arrest and said, hopefully he can be extradited to the US so he can be turned into a uh, favorable, uh, into a cooperative witness who will provide us all of the information we need to know on Russia's attacks on our great democracy. Or that the New York Times even 
editorial board even praised Assange's arrest and said the Trump administration's off to a good start here. I mean, no, are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I'll read you the quote. Hold on. Give me those quotes, man. You're not, you're saying when he was arrested? On April 11th, when he was arrested. It was April 11th, right? 2019, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me read you. This is going to make me throw up. Give me a bit. The administration, this is the New York Times editorial board, uh, April 11th, 2019. The administration has begun well by charging M Mr. Assange with an indisputable crime. That's the New York Times editorial board. The, the same day. The New York day. Times editorial board did that? Yes. Michelle fucking Goldberg did that? I don't know if she's on the board or who's on the board, but they suck. I mean, they fucking suck. And now they they're like- said that? What yeah. a fucking disgrace, man. What a fucking disgrace that is. Give me the Washington Post one now. Mr. Assange's case con con could conclude as a victory for the rule of law, not the defeat for civil liberties of which his defenders mistakenly warn. And then that, they, is that a Washington Post editorial? April 11th, 2019, moments after he was arrested. So that's bas basically a CIA owned paper that subsidizes Jeff Bezos' $300 million purchase. And uh, they have editorial writers who gave that uh, bullshit opinion yeah but that yeah. makes me sick man you know what why would you remind me of that right now because i'm trying to be optimistic about these uh major publications i'm trying well, it's like uh the the way that i view the assange case and I, i'm sure the way he views it too is as a reflection of the institutions of western social democracy and their complete demise and especially, you know, the, the legacy media publications and the NGOs that are supposed to represent civil society, um, most of them, if not all, have completely failed him, as well as his own government, which is a vassal for the United States. That was what my talk at the Courage Foundation event that we did last year was about, was about how the you know, civil society has really failed Julian Assange. And that the you know what? You're totally the right, man. That was a great speech. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, you know, you were brilliant that day in Queens. I was there. Uh, and uh, now I, I, I would ask you with your stories that you've, uh, you've revealed, you have very few uh, media outlets out there, particularly major media acceptable outlets that are there to say, wow, what a great expose Max Blumenthal just put out there. You know, yeah. I went to every single person that I know in mainstream media and said, look what we have here. We have CIA spying, Sheldon Adelson, Mike Pompeo. I went to the New York Times, I spoke to Michelle Goldberg. I spoke to uh, Natasha Bertrand. I don't want to say their names individually. I spoke to uh, people at the New York Times. You just said their names. Well, I'm going to have those excellent <laughs> in editing. And, uh, you know, I spoke to uh, my friends at MSNBC that, who shows I've done. I said, look. I've got something here. This is the CIA. This is Mike Pompeo spying on innocent American journalists. I'm just a radio fucking host, and they're spying on me. And you know what? No one gave a fuck. Why didn't they give a fuck here and protect my rights and all of our rights? All of these so-called progressive journalists from these major uh, media uh, publications like the Times, like the Washington Post, like the MSNBC and CNN media outlets. Why didn't they come to my fucking support at this critical point? Seriously. 
I'm That's a little what... upset about it, man, because they used me for two fucking years as a uh, as a charm, as a uh, as a, uh, a a monkey uh, with with an organ grinder uh, in the uh, in, in, in the Roger Stone Russiagate uh, drama. Why didn't they come to my aid here and say, "Look, this is really bad that you have been." totally fucked by the CIA in this investigation. Why didn't they? They're authoritarian Democrats and all they care about is control and they have no principles whatsoever. And, uh, you know, I used to know some of them from the Bush era and thought they had principles. I thought they were against war, but it turned out they were just against Bush's Republican war. And now they've lined up with the CIA and the FBI just because they want to get Donald Trump out. And you presented them with a story that showed that Donald Trump's CIA was completely corrupt, carrying out illegal activities. But it turns out that they hate Julian Assange, who they blame for getting Hill, you know, Donald Trump elected more than Donald Trump's CIA and then you have the fact that the Washington Post, through its corporate master Amazon, has a six hundred million dollar contract to host what it is? CIA's cloud server. They have a ten billion dollar contract with the Pentagon. Uh, they're hosting. I, there are so many intelligence contracts. They're building a new headquarters here in Northern Virginia, down the street from me to be next door to Langley. We look forward to a successful relationship with the CIA, Amazon declared in a 2014 official statement. And when the Washington Post sent its top national security reporter, Ellen Nakashima, to the Ecuadorian embassy in December 2017, and they filed a request for her to go in with UC Global, which was guarding the embassy, the CIA contractor, their company is listed not as the Washington Post, but as Amazon. Ellen Nakashima's company is listed on this form that I've obtained as Amazon, <laughs> which is, it's just amazing. Wait a second, she works for Amazon, not the Washington Post. No, she works for the Washington Post, but the Washington Post reporter listed, had her company listed as Amazon when they entered the embassy. Wait, and so she went to the embassy and she, she yeah. said she worked for Amazon. But that's just the, the the, to the tip of the iceberg. She was spied on in the embassy, just like you were. The UC Global Guard, I have his notes. It's embedded in my piece. He said that he tried to steal her voice recorder, but she remembered it at the door. And so he reluctantly handed it back to her. She didn't suspect he was trying to steal her shit. But she now knows that she was spied on. Like, it's just a fact. And it's she must be outraged, right? Yeah, she's so outraged that she hasn't said a word. And so many reporters who are spied on from the mainstream media haven't said a word. And we can only deduce that they haven't said a word and haven't raised hell about having their constitutional rights violated by the CIA because the CIA is basically providing them with a feeding trough. It's like their, it's, it's their feeding tube. Like it's like, like what kept Terry Schiavo alive. That's like what keeps these corporate hacks alive is these are dead the reporters these are dead reporters basically in bed being fed being uh, through an iv uh corporate yeah, money they're like they're from, like from cia money and corporate money they're being fed you you know u.s official according to u.s officials russia um hacked into our uh electrical grid and turned off the uh, heating system on grandma and she froze to death, like the final scene of St. Elmo's fire. It's like, it's the most absurd. Are there others, wait, are there others that have uh, been spied on uh, that have not come forward? Yes. From the mainstream media? Yes. Mac? Lowell Bergman, who is a renowned investigative reporter, very, you know, mainstream credentialed figure, but he's done, you know, serious reporting throughout his career. He's a veteran of the New York Times and PBS. 
he was spied on when meeting with Assange in 2017. I have the video. I screenshotted some of it in my piece. He said nothing. I wrote him, I wrote him and Ellen Nakashima, by the way. I haven't gotten any response from them about why they've said nothing. Wait, they don't feel that they've been violated? The two I mean, it, I swear, if Putin had done this, if there was like a suspicion that Russia had spied on these reporters, they'd be freaking out. It would be like a gigantic scandal. So, you know, I have, I was spied on. You're talking about two people that were spied on. Me, uh, to a lesser degree, I'm not a journalist. I'm a comedian and I had a radio show. I had uh, interviewed Assange uh, three or four times in 2017. I went there and then, uh, you know, I had, I was spied on. And I told my friends at the Wall Street Journal, people that I knew that did stories on me, Mother Jones, uh, uh, Yahoo News, uh, MSNBC, CNN, the New York Times, uh, the Daily News, uh, and, and five or six other outlets that, and no one was fucking interested in, and I even showed them the photos of me. I showed them the photos of me uh, from uh, that Morales's photos of me in the embassy, and no one gave a fuck about that, which I was really, I mean, it was like I was so disconcerted by that. Uh, I mean, wouldn't you be disconcerted that the people that did stories on me uh, on this bogus Russiagate uh, investigation uh, were not concerned that I was a victim of a spy operation by Pompeo, the someone that they su are supposed to hate? The Trump administration spied on reporters. That's like what the conclusion of this story is through the CIA, which is legally forbidden from doing that. And the, pub, the employers of these reporters, the editorial boards representing the newspapers that these reporters worked for, cheered on as Julian Assange was dragged out of an embassy by British police on foreign soil and thrown into a maximum security prison. I mean, I can't think of a, the, the real indictment here is of mainstream US media. I, I just can't even believe it. And it's like, it's one thing that they would kind of stand aside and, or no, no, not stand aside. It's, it's one thing that they cheer as a publisher and journalist is put on trial under the Espionage Act and faces possibly 175 years in prison if he's extradited to the US and is currently being tortured in solitary confinement in the UK. It's one thing that they cheer and deny that this sets a precedent for national security reporting or reporting in general or the freedom of the press. But it's just in terms of self-interest and how I understand people to react on an emotional level and the whining about the, by the Beltway press corps about Donald Trump browbeating them and seeing, saying mean things to them over the last four years. Given all that, I find it even more amazing that the reporters who've been spied on, with the exception of Stefania Morizzi and Glenn Greenwald, who are obviously much more independent, I find it amazing that they have been able to stay silent throughout this. Like it's like the entire craft that they represent and their integrity was put on the line and they just decided to be like Mike Pompeo's little subs. Let me ask you, wait a second. You don't consider uh, Jim Acosta or Jim Sciotto journalists, do you? They're no. Not no, They're and Jim, these guys are the biggest. No, let's, let's be honest with them. They are not journalists. What are these guys other than escapees from, uh, as mannequins from Saks Fifth Avenue? I would say, what, what, what are than. these two fuckheads that are not journalists that just go on and, like, uh, as drones and put you to sleep? 
Who are they? What are they? They're not journalists. And where the fuck did they come from? Well, they're like, they're like a really kind of crude, kitsch version of Operation Mockingbird. And Jim Shudo used to work in the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. He quit his job as a journalist to work in the Obama State Department for Gary Locke, who is the ambassador to China. And now he's running around on CNN, stirring up Cold War hysteria about China. And I, I, I mentioned once on Twitter that he worked in the U.S. Embassy in China. It was like a major base of the CIA in China. It's like where so they these guys are operations and these he guys are inside guys. Yeah, I mean, he freaked out on me. I these. know that we get we get crazy talking about Operation Mockingbird, but you can't tell me that Jim Skelto and Jim Acosta, who you never see in the same frame together, they may be the same guy. All right. They may be, you never see them together. They may be the one person, uh, but they're not journalists. Do you consider them journalists? I mean, it's a very broad definition, and I, I, I'm not going to even weigh in on that. I'm just, I consider them to be sort of, Acosta is just a complete narcissistic hack performer who's playing off of anti-Trump sentiment and, and Russia hysteria to be in the limelight. And I think Shudo really is a true believer in the U.S. national security state and the foreign policy establishment. And, yeah, uh, well, they got, let me tell you something. They have a uh, great, uh, uh, you know, salon uh, hair blower, uh, you know, performers because their hair is always perfect. And at, at times they do look different, but it's the same person. I really believe it is the same person. Uh, you know, it's like Clark Kent and Superman. Uh, I I really can't. It's like it's like Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes is like the same person. Yeah. No, no, no. Where are they all? Yeah. Listen, we've been I'm talking Rachel to Maddow. Max Max Blumenthal. I could talk to you all night long if I were still drinking because that's what yeah, I, I, I ran right. out. I'd like to get a bottle of uh, a rye like I brought to your 40th birthday party. A bottle of rye. When I was sober, and when it was over, I drank a whole fucking bottle of rye. But uh, it's 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 really amazing. You're on the story, Gray Zone News, uh, thegrayzone.com, thegrayzone.com. But it's not just you. It's Ben Norton. It, it's my uh, the the, the uh, very funny. He's also very funny. Uh, the gentleman I had on uh, last night. Uh, who is with you, uh, Aaron Mate? Aaron Mate, and He's then funny. of course the great, the great, the very great Anya Perenfield, uh, who's with you. Are there others besides the four of you with the Gray Zone? Well, we have a, a good. Crew oh, I mean, the the, the main core, the main core. That's our main core. You know, that's the. The, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And then we got, you know, a good list of contributors and we're always open to new contributors. The only thing I ask for is just real original gumshoe reporting. I don't like commentary. We don't want op-eds. We don't want any funny stuff. We just want reporting and we just want to give it to people raw. That's what we try to do. We're just, we're just doing classic journalism and we're doing what we thought journalism was, which is to actually challenge power instead of to be stenographers. And, you know, if one of us was spied on by a CIA contractor, you'd be hearing about it. I just can't get myself in the mindset of someone who would allow that to take place. I, I just can't understand it. I, I would love to encounter them personally. I'd love to see the people. I mean, you mentioned some names of some reporters that you confronted with this story. I mean, you, you offered them this incredible story. I brought I the eventually pictures, did. man. I, I would love to pictures. meet them and say, what the, what the hell's wrong with you? Why, why didn't you? why weren't you interested in this? The stuff you were reporting 
was complete garbage. You were like, these reporters are like running all around, like reporting on like Paul Manafort in Ukraine and stuff that like they thought was going to bring Trump down that never did anything when they had like. A Trump was spying on, on me. Trump yeah. was spying on Stefani Morici. Trump was spying on the reporter from the New York Times and the Washington Post. Uh, and uh, so was Pompeo. And so they should have been on that. And they weren't. They dropped the ball. And it's still not a story except for at Gray Zone. That's it. It's a story at Gray Zone and others who have picked it up. Uh, and, well, that's and our I bag, that. man. That's really like, that's our bag is like, we pick up the, the slack for the garbage, vacuous, sold out, bought off stenographers of power that populate US media, including what passes for progressive US media or these people who run around saying, I'm a socialist, I'm a Bernie socialist, and they don't do anything. So we just pick up the slack and we've found that there's a huge audience of people that are hungry for this kind of journalism. So uh, we did it again, and I'm gonna keep following this court case in Spain. I think it is one of the seminal if legal episodes of our time, true. and it complements what's happening in London, which is the trial of the century. I, I totally agree. And you know, what you have, uh, what you have unearthed and what you have, uh, uh, conveyed and unveiled uh, uh, you know, internationally, I think is a huge boon uh, in this case in support of Julian Assange. If people want to uh, give you uh, stories, information, how do they do that? Those out there that are listening to this show that want to give the same way they did to WikiLeaks, which right now is handcuffed and, and can't like uh, get the kind of uh, info they did before and put it out there. You're you're a perfect vehicle to do it. How do they do that, Max? With without fear of being revealed. Well, we we don't have like a WikiLeaks secure drop system, and I find it so phony when I see all these reporters on their on their Twitter bios with their secure key numbers and everything and like though they're really communicating with like top level whistleblowers all, all the like intercept reporters had that and they wound up uh, getting three uh, sources arrested so it that's bullshit we have a public email form and you know if you email us uh, we've gotten a bunch of stories through our public email form and when we do a story we do it proper and we haven't burned any sources like the intercept has which wait a second the intercept has burned sources yeah i don't know if you heard of reality winner terry albury <laughs> um there there might be a few others but yeah i know and, and they're like players, they have all the top thomas drake brings that up all the time yeah and they have all the top secret technology and all this and they all all the reporters are like reach out to me at my secure pin drop whatever bullshit there is and like give me a break man signal is there the, the the cia has a back door to signal that's something that uh wikileaks revealed in vault seven and beyond that the u.s agency for global media which is op operates out of the state department put up the seed money to start signal so don't even think that you're safe just if you send an email to the gray zone it's no different than communicating on signal that's really you know I, I i really appreciate the fact that you're honest about that but those who want to just tip uh off a story uh, uh that someone is interested in that the major yeah, media is not they could at least give it to you to investigate right yeah, and you know, I get all kinds of mail uh, from our uh, public email. I respond to it all. I read every email. So, I mean, I just like the correspondence with our readers, and they're really generally pretty smart people. I mean, some of them are like, you know, need to be institutionalized, but for the most part, they're really smart people, and I learn a lot from them. All right. Listen, we, we've been talking to Max Blumenthal. Max, 
uh, just to put a cap on this, um, this is a science countdown to freedom. Uh, your thoughts, uh, closing thoughts about the uh, uh, persecution of Julian Assange, how important it is uh, to support him and how uh, negative the consequences would be if in fact he is extradited uh, to the United States. Just give us a, your overview on that. Well, he will be put in supermax conditions and tortured as so many prisoners have been if he's um, kidnapped by the United States. It will be a kidnapping. He is currently a political prisoner. He will be officially a political prisoner of the United States. And he will be coerced into giving up through the physical and psychological torture that he experiences. He will be tried in an area of Northern Virginia that contains the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, the CIA, and the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, the largest office building on the planet. It is home to a who's who of defense contractors, private spies, and assorted beltway bandits, and the employees of those aforementioned departments, companies, will populate the jury of Assange's trial. He will be tried before a judge, Brinkema, who has convicted something like 98% of uh, defendants in national security trials. And he will be prosecuted by someone, Gordon Cromberg, who is a hardcore Republican ultra-Zionist ideologue who spearheaded and instrumentalized the major bogus terror trials of the George W. Bush era after 9-11. A malicious character who I've actually witnessed in action, who is extremely bigoted and chauvinistic. And I don't think that he stands a chance in that atmosphere. So with that in mind, we have to look at this current hearing as the trial of the century and understand what the consequences are. The consequences are that if Julian Assange loses his rights and you're you know, involved in other protests for other rights, you, you lose those rights to protest what, to the extent that we still had them. I mean, some people I know, uh, one person I know was just arrested today in Denver, Colorado and had a tank, a literal tank pull up to his house his name is Joel Northam, and he was um, leading a protest outside the Aurora, Colorado Police Department to demand that the police who killed a teen and joked about it while they were killing him be prosecuted. And he's now facing 16 years in prison. So we're just witnessing the mask of democracy be lifted. And it's important to see these cases as touchstones uh, that will define the kind of future the rest of us has and define our ability to dissent. So, I mean, I, I don't know how much more I can say than that, um, but uh, I, I, I really um, wouldn't be so focused on this, this case if I didn't think that it was one of the most seminal trials of my lifetime. Wow. Max Blumenthal, you know, I can't follow that in that that was really heavy, really poetic. And uh, as uh, always, thank you very much for your time. Uh, and like, I, I can't follow that. We will be right back with some closing remarks. Uh, once again, uh, award-winning journalist, uh, author, uh, Max Blumenthal. We'll be right back, folks. With what has happened the last two centuries, uh, African Americans gunned down by law enforcement, enslaved, uh, put to work, uh, convict leasing, put in jail for the drug war. But in the last week, it's really heated up and it's got to stop. 
Southern trees bear strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees twisted mouth scent of magnolia sweet and fresh then the sudden smell of burning flesh here is a fruit Crows to pluck for the rain together, for the wind to suck, for the sun to rot, for the tree to drop. Bitter Cry